Welcome to the Defiance College virtual tour. Welcome to Sarah Campus Center, the first stop on our tour. Sarah Campus Center is essentially the central hub of campus, so a lot of stuff goes on here. As you saw when you walked in, we do house the admissions office here. Upstairs we have um, facilities and events, marketing, and then the registrar's and financial aid offices. This building also has many classroom spaces and boardroom spaces available. Uh, you will most likely have classes in here at some point, and then a lot of events are held in this building as well. To our right, we have our cafeteria where you would get the food. So here, um, there are there is a lot of variety provided in this cafeteria space. So we have in the middle here we have a soup and salad bar. Straight back we have our meals of the day. To the left we have a grill station. There's always cereal, bread, bagels available in the morning for breakfast as well. There's also for lunch and dinner, uh, make your own sandwiches and things like that. And then there's a great dessert selection as well. And then here we have our cafeteria space where students eat their meals. Dana Hall, home of our liberal arts. Alrighty, as I said before, this is Dana Hall. Dana Hall is the home of the liberal arts here at Defiance College. So for that reason, as an incoming freshman, you will have a lot of your general education courses in here. So we're gonna peek into a classroom really quickly. Put it this way. So this is what a very average classroom looks like in Dana Hall and across the campus here at Defiance College. So our average classroom size is 15 and our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. So you're going to get really good interpersonal experiences within your classrooms. You're going to have a lot of discussion based classes, interactive learning, that kind of thing. It's not going to be very lecture based. We do find that the success rate of students is higher for this reason. So that is why we do that. This building also houses our new computer science degree and our cyber forensics degree as well. And they have their own uh, classroom and computer lab called the Holodeck. So in here, you have to have a student ID to get in. So once you are admitted into the program, you will have access to this space as well, which is a really good resource for our computer science and cyber forensics program. Alrighty, next up on our stops here at Dana Hall is our Schomburg Auditorium. So this space is primarily used for on-campus events and entertainment purposes. As you saw in our classroom space that I showed you earlier, our classroom sizes are very small. If you went to a larger institution, this is what a lot of your classroom spaces would look like. So you're gonna have large lecture halls with upwards of 200 to 300 students, and attendance isn't really gonna be monitored and it's not gonna be as interpersonal as it is here at a smaller institution like Defiance College. So this space is never used for classrooms. In my four years here, there's never been a classroom in this room. Uh, it is primarily used for, as I said, on-campus events, entertainment for students. We've had performers come, like comedians, hypnotists, magicians, um, even a rapper came one time. It was really cool during Welcome Week. It is also used for some athletic type of events, like um, preseason on-campus meetings. The football team uses this space for film. We have NCAA compliance in here things like that to just kind of get all the student athletes together welcomed, get some paperwork out of the way for all of that. So yeah, that's what this space is used for. Alrighty, so here we have our art wing in Dana Hall. So to the right here we have a, our Women's Commission Art Gallery. So around twice a semester we do have different exhibits come through and then at the end of each year our seniors in the art program are able to display some of their work and projects that they've been working very hard on throughout the year. Our art wing goes right down through here, down this hallway. It is a big open space and uh, the Defiance College does offer graphics, design, art program, and a studio art minor. So they have their space and classroom spaces down there, which is really great. The next stop on our tour is to go look at the residence options we have here on campus and we are going to peek into one of the freshman dorm rooms to give you a peek at what that looks like. 
We have two on-campus resident options that are apartment style living. One of them is right behind me. It is the pods or jacket suite apartments. So a way to get into the apartments as an upperclassman, this is offered based on your credits. So you would have three other roommates, four of you total, and you would pull together your credits and the groups with the highest credits get first pick on the apartment complexes. As I said, the pods is one option. We do have the Grand Ave apartments, which are over by athletics. And then over here, another um, upperclassman option is Whitney Hall. These are dormitory style residence halls. So your traditional one roommate and you together living in a space, shared room space. Next up, we have the freshman dorms or residence hall, McReynolds residence hall. So this space is automatically for freshmen. As a freshman coming in, you will get placed here automatically. Um, yeah, and so then again, traditional dorm style, you and a roommate sharing a room space, and we will get a chance to look inside those in a little bit. So now we are heading into McReynolds Hall. Right behind me is our student security desk. So during the week from eight o'clock at night to 12 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock in the morning, there is a student security worker that works at this desk. It's just a extra monitoring for students and their safety entering the buildings and things like that. And then during the weekends, it's from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So it's a little bit extended hours, extra security, things like that. Here we have McReynolds Lobby. So as you can see right here, we have computers available for student use. At the computer security desk, there is a printer available as well. And then here we have various activities for students, TV, pool table, ping pong. All of this is free for student use, just extra entertainment for students. We do have to swipe to get into these, to the main hallway portion of the video. The first thing we're gonna look at is a uh, mock showroom. So we're gonna go into there and peek inside to see what is, and what it looks like to live here. So this is what a typical setup in the dorm room looks like. You do have two beds, two desks, and two closet spaces available to automatically come with the room. Um, you would provide any extra storage you would need or anything like that. Uh, things you can have in your room, obviously a TV. The room is cable ready as well. So free cable across all the dorm halls or residence halls on campus. And then you can also have a refrigerator, microwave, any lighting sources you want, um, just nothing with an open heat source, so no toasters, hot plates, that kind of thing, uh, just for extra safety precaution, precautions. Um, yeah, so this is what a typical room looks like. An extra resource for freshmen here on this campus is this beautiful computer space. This is brand new. They just redid it over winter break this year, so this is just an extra extra computers for students to use, things like that. It is located on the first floor of McReynolds Hall. And then next up, we are going to head to the laundry room and check that out, what that's like. So this is our laundry space here on campus. Laundry, washing and drying are free. All of the machines are free. You just have to provide your own dryer sheets and washing detergent, things like that. But pretty nice that it's free, so it's a definite plus as a freshman in college. There also is one of these on each floor of the building so you don't have to lug your laundry up and down. And then this way we have our community kitchen. So as a freshman, if you miss home cooked meals or wanna make cookies with your friends or have like just a family dinner basically with the friends you've made, you can do that here. And sometimes you just need a break from the cafeteria food as well, which as I said, there is a lot of variety, but it's just nice to have this space as well. And now we are gonna head out of McReynolds Hall and head to the Pilgrim Library next. So next up, we are gonna head to the Pilgrim Library, which is right behind me. So here we have the Pilgrim Library. This is a very important part of student life here on campus. There's a lot of resources for students in here and a lot of information that I'm going to be going over. The first thing when you walk in, in into the Pilgrim Library is going to be the um, circ desk. This is this giant desk behind me. So a couple of things about the circ desk. Um, the first important thing as an incoming student to note is the course reserves, which is that middle shelf right there in the center of the desk area. 
The course reserves are available for student use. They are um, textbooks for each of our classes, the majority of our classes that are on reserve for students to check out at any time for up to two hours. So ideally in this situation for all of your general educa education courses, you would be able to save a couple hundred dollars by using the course reserves instead of buying new textbooks. So that's kind of the, a pro for incoming students to think about. And then obviously here we do have other resources for students like help with research, the CERC desk manages if you want to check out any other books throughout the library, um, or any help with looking up other resources that Defiance College may not have but you would be able to use from other institutions or online resources that we have available here at the college. So the next thing to discuss in the library is going to be our Student Academic Support Services Office or our SAS office. So the first thing that the SAS office runs is the learning studio, which is right behind me. So usually during um, open hours of the library, the learning studio always has a writing consultant and a math tutor on duty available for students to come utilize the services and get help. Um, you can also create appointments. So if you have a specific assignment due and your teacher requires that you have a writing consultant look over your paper, you can set up an appointment to make sure that they are available and they don't have any other students that they're working with. Same with the math tutors as well. Also through the SAS office, you are able to set up individual tutors. So if you have a class that you're just struggling a little with and need a little extra help, they can reach out to students who they know have done well in that class and they can set up an individual tutor for you if that is available for that course. Other things that the SAS office offers is supplemental instruction leaders, so SIs. SIs run study group sessions in classes that are known to be a little bit more difficult for students like bio, biology, chemistry, anatomy, and intro to psychology, things like that. So they do have, um, they run either once a week or twice a week large classroom study group sessions for the students who are in that course. So all of that is really good and really good resources for students to utilize here on the campus. So behind me we have the learning commons which is where um, students are able to clock in for their structured study plan hours. Here on Defiance College's campus our athletic department requires that each coach create a plan for their student athletes to meet a certain amount of hours in the library. It's different for each sports team coming in as a freshman and then it's based off of your GPA each semester that you finish up. So um, it'll change throughout your time here but each athletic program here on Defiance College kind of has a different requirement. Behind the learning comments we also have a, our career development office. So um, the, the purpose of that office is just to provide certain resources for students like finding internships, finding jobs after graduation, resume building, mock interviews, just practice getting into job readiness and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's just an extra resource for students. We also have a computer lab and printing available. There is print, free printing across campus as well, so you don't have to pay like per page or anything like that, which is really awesome. More free stuff is always good for college students. Next up, we are going to head down to the McMaster office and the eSports lounge. So. so right now we are in the eSports lounge. So Defiance College does offer the eSports as part of our athletics. So students are able to receive a scholarship for eSports as long as they're not participating in another athletic program on campus. So this is a really cool opportunity. Not a lot of schools at our division or in our area have this, and it's just an extra fun experience for students to be a part of. And our program is really good. We have the Ohio State and things like that, so really awesome. Alrighty, so right now we are in the McMaster office. So this office houses our honors program, our service leaders program, and then the McMaster School for Advancing Humanity. So I'm gonna to touch a little bit on each of those. The honors program is an opportunity for students to get involved in honors coursework. It's just making their uh, coursework a little bit more advanced and a little bit more um, exciting for them and they can kind of tailor that work to, toward themselves. And obviously you would graduate with an honors degree and having that stamp on your diploma does look a little bit nicer on resumes and things like that. Our service leaders program is a way to get involved in more service opportunities here on campus. That is one of our four pillars of the college is getting involved in service. So um, being a part of the service leaders program is an extra scholarship as well and you just have to meet a certain requirement of hours and get involved specifically with one 
element of service that you're interested most in. And then lastly, our McMaster School for Advancing Humanity is an amazing opportunity to get involved in on campus. It is a way for students to get involved in undergraduate research in their field at an undergraduate level, which is nearly impossible at any other institution. So essentially what you're going to be doing is um, you would apply for a program to get into. So we do have different locations around the world as well as local initiatives as well. So you would apply for a specific program and you would meet with the instructor to essentially build a project that is in your field of interest. So um, depending on what your major is, we have something that you could be doing across all of the majors that we have here on campus. And then you would conduct that research whether it be locally or abroad. And if you get into the program, it is a free travel expenses are paid for and um, you're getting to go abroad and do things or work locally and all of the resources are provided for you. You're getting experience in your field, which is amazing. So very good programs to get involved in down here and great opportunities here that Finds College offers students. Alrighty, next up we are gonna be heading to Hubbard Hall, which is Basically, it's just a student life building, so there are no academics in here, but we're gonna go over all of the fun stuff in there next. Alrighty, so the Hubbard Hall is also the home of our student life offices. So our Dean of Students, our Dean of Intercultural Relations and Assistant Dean of Students, and our Director of Residence Life and Director of Students Life are all down here. Are also our hall directors are housed down here, and if you had any problems with roommate issues or needed to talk to your RA and things like that, you could contact them through this resource of offices. This is basically a student building, so there's a lot of fun things and resources in here for student use. So the first thing, this building is 24 hours. Our security offices run out of this building and they patrol the campus. So for that reason, behind me is our only 24 hour computer lab on campus other than the ones that are in the dorm rooms that we saw earlier. So this building, if you wanna get out of your dorm room, get away for a little bit and focus on your work, you can come here because it is open 24 hours. There is also a printer in here and again, there is free printing across campus. Back here we have the hive, so this is our secondary meal option on campus. Things like specialty coffee drinks, pre-made sandwiches and salads, and then we also have things like mozzarella sticks, burgers, fries. Um, we have smoothies uh, and also protein shakes too, which you can make, which is really, really awesome. That's a new thing that they added. So this is based on your munch money or meal money that you get with your meal plan. So you can spend that or regular cash or card here as well. Um, but having that looped into your meal plan gets you out of the cafeteria if you get sick of it, that kind of thing. So that's an extra resource for students. This space also has a lot of fun events that are hosted in here. So behind me there is a screen. Sometimes we'll show movies in here. We have like Super Bowl watch parties, things like that, any like larger athletic events or things like that that we want to show here we'll show in here and then have like snacks and things like that for students so just extra fun spaces that students have access to over here we have the honors lounge so if you are a part of the carolyn m small honors program you have access by key code to this lounge so again just an extra study space for honor students they get a little bit extra private access so it's a nice perk of being in the program Next up, we are going to head to the science buildings, Rao Hall and Tenzer Hall. They are connected, but they are two separate buildings, so we're going to go through both of those and talk about what's inside. Right now, we are walking into Rao Hall. So Rao Hall is the home of um, more of our lecture style classroom spaces for the sciences and math classes. So your biology, or your biology lectures, your chemistry lectures, Kind of thing you'll have more of that in this building and then Tinser Hall which we are about to walk through this hallway to get to uh, that has more of your laboratory spaces so your chemistry labs anatomy labs we also do have a cadaver lab on the third floor of this building which is a really unique um, resource that division for a division three campus and smaller school like ourselves so this is kind of the middle ground between the two halls but um, yeah so this is where our science halls are there are a lot of um, spaces to work in. There is a computer lab available in this classroom as well as all the other academic classrooms across the campus so that students, if they need to print papers or for class, that kind of thing, that is available. Uh, no. Down this way we have our nursing program, which is a one-to-one -one split with our Northwest Community, Northwest State Community College that is just up the road. So here is the home of the nursing program. So we are leaving Tenzer Hall right now and behind me is our greenhouse classroom space. 
So there is a classroom space and lab area inside of the greenhouse and um, it is also an access point for upperclassmen science students and just an extra study space for them that they have access to with their key with a key card and key access. Um, and then the greenhouse itself is used for our botany courses. Our uh, field botany lab and ecology club also uses this space. And next up we are going to be going to Schaffler Hall which is our social sciences and English building. So right now we are in Schaffler Hall. This is our social sciences building and English department is also housed in this building as well. So social sciences encompass religious studies, social work, psychology, and then like I said, English is also in this building. Our music program is also housed in this building, so we have rehearsal spaces and various um, lessons are offered as well through the music program. So another very adorable feature in this building is we do have a take a book, leave a book that is offered, so students are able to piece through this mini library and grab a book that interests them, as well as leaving a book that they've already read and they love and they want to pass on to somebody else. So this is a new edition, which I greatly appreciate and hope students know about, so yeah. Next up, we are going into Defiance Hall. Defiance Hall is the home of our education department as well as our business and accounting departments. So in this building, we also have a lot of very important office spaces that I'm going to be going over as well. Alrighty, so right now, as I said, we are in Defiance Hall, the home of our education department and business and accounting departments as well. Down here to your right, we have our president's suite. So upstairs, we have our business office. So if you are employed by the college through work study or anything like that, this is where you would get your paycheck. That's also where you would provide payments for your schooling. Straight up ahead above me, we have our intercampus development and alumni offices. So again, just another resource for students. And then down here, straight behind me, we have our Veterans Affairs Resource Center. So we do have a pretty large veteran, uh, veteran population on campus, and this is just a resource center and lounge for them to have. And behind me, there are a number of hallways um, that lead back, and there's classroom spaces and things like that back there. There's also two offices that are very important that I want to talk about. One being the Counseling Center. So the Counseling Center is just another resource for students to use. Um, and it's free, provided by the college, so definitely if there's anything going on, I definitely recommend students and I like to know that that is available to them. Another resource back there is the Accessibility Services Office, so they can help with testing accommodations if you're losing, if you're going to be missing a large amount of schooling, anything like that, they can accommodate and help you access and make sure you're succeeding inside and outside of the classroom, so just more resources for students to know about. Next up, we're going to step into one of our newly renovated classrooms. This is our steel, steel case classroom. So this is one of our recent additions to the college. Everything in this space is basically mobile and it provides a unique experience for students to have the most interactive learning experience possible. So the classroom is designed specifically to promote interactive learning as we have seen, as I mentioned in Dana Hall, that a lot of the studies show that there is a higher success rate in learning with interactive learning classrooms. So that is what this space is used for. We are expanding this project and moving it to other buildings on campus. There are two other locations right now across campus, but this is the first one, so I do like to highlight this room on tours. Um, yeah. Thank you for taking the tour of campus. Hope you enjoyed it. Soon the grass will be green and the flowers will be blooming. If you'd like to learn more about Defiance College, whether you're an athlete, whether you're interested in a particular academic program, I know the contact information is available on the next screen. Thank you and stay safe in this interesting environment we now find ourselves in. Go Jackets!